You guys asked me to create a training for you on the logo design process, and that's what I'm here to do today. Today's video is about logo design and the seven steps for you to make a logo from scratch. And I'm talking about a beautiful, stunning logo that you can sell and make thousands of dollars on. Yes, I said thousands, not hundreds, not $5, but a ton of money. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Let's go. I wanted to make a really great video for you guys today on the logo design process. There are lots of different people, lots of different videos that you can watch on it, but this one is gonna go in depth and talk about what you need to do and what you don't wanna do when creating an amazing logo. You wanna create an amazing logo, you follow these seven steps. These are the things that I've been doing since I started. I'm starting to take everything out of my mind and put it on the paper, put it into courses and content like this. So if you love this content, definitely drop a comment down below, introduce yourself, would love to get to know you. So we have seven steps. The first step is the discovery phase really understanding who your client is, what their pricing strategy is, what the logo is gonna be used for. These are the questions that you wanna be asking them. These are very, very important questions. What kind of pricing? Who's your target client? What is the logo for? What's the look and feel? What type of industry do you have? These are all important things that you need to know about that process and you really wanna to get to know that person as a human being. Who are they? What makes them tick? What wakes them up in the morning? I go so far and beyond what typical graphic designers do in terms of their questioning and their creative brief. That's why I'm able to create the logos that I can create because my discovery process or my creative brief, as some like to call it, is really, really in depth. I want to know who they are, what makes them tick, who their heart is, and, and just what makes them get up every day and do what they're doing. So that's really important to understand, understanding their core values, understanding their beliefs, what rules they've set for themselves. These are all just really important pieces to know about your customer or your client that I want you to make sure that you focus on as well. The other piece to this that's really important is understanding the archetype. A lot of people forget about the character archetype of what kind of character are there. There's a video that I can do on this specifically talking about the 12 different archetypes, but for now, I'm just gonna tell you there are 12 different archetypes. You can research this, um, but you have the lover, the creator, the sage, the jester, the everyman, the caregiver, there's tons of them. So you need to understand what type of character they are because that's gonna help you not just develop the logo, but in turn, what I want you to do is develop them a brand. So this is really, really important. The second step to creating an amazing logo is you need to do a brand study. And what I mean by brand study is you need to do your research and start to work on some of the research elements, looking at their competitors, looking at who's close by, who's on the other side of the country, who's in other parts of the world, finding inspiration online on Instagram. You can find great tutorials or great images that you can use. You can go on YouTube, you can go to Google Images, you can go to brandsoftheworld.com and type in industries and verticals and names and that will come up as well. And do your research, the things that really stand out to you what I like to do is I take five or six different concepts of things that I found around a brand that I really like and the things that I don't like about some logos and I will combine those into one concept. I'm taking multiple ideas, refining down the pieces that I like and putting it into one concept. Something that I want you to do is take the ones that you love the most and put them on a, a Google slide or some sort of worksheet where you can kind of have what we call mood boards. They teach this in graphic design school. I didn't go to graphic design school, as you know, I'm self-taught, but some of those principles I have applied to my own business just through teaching myself. So you want to create some sort of a mood board to get an idea so you can show your clients and your customers the history and all the work that you went through in researching and what is the best concept. And then take those things and give them back to your peers or to some other people, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, and get some of their feedback and see which ones they like and what they liked about those logos and what they don't. It's really important to get other people involved in this, whether it's on your team or in your community, like we have with the Instagraphics Pro Network, this is a really great opportunity. If you're trying to decide and narrow things down, you want to talk to other experts like myself, like Ian and Andrew and all the other people that we have in our community, I want you to plug in there, be able to utilize that resource very effectively. The third step is ideation. And what I mean by ideation is the actual execution of starting to draw some sketches, starting to come up with some of your own original ideas and taking the concepts that you were inspired by in step two and actually putting them onto paper or putting them onto your iPad or putting them onto your tablet, wherever you're drawing your concepts, you wanna put them on there so you can start actually putting some of these, these ideas into action and fulfilling on these things. And then when you do that, you're gonna be able to flush out which design concepts actually work, which ones don't. And so I want you to make sure you spend a good amount of time actually planning and sketching and don't rush this process. It's really important that you take your time, step away from it, draw out a few different sketches, walk away, go have lunch, go have dinner and come back to it 
with a fresh mind, with fresh eyes. Don't get caught up and hung up on one concept. Make sure that you give yourself multiple concepts and multiple ideas. One of the things that I do within the ideation in that process is if the letter is like GHS, which we're gonna drop some of that uh, B-roll footage hopefully in here, but you'll see the GHS logo that we're working on. I put G plus H plus S, and then I use their little box logo that they already have existing because I don't wanna make their logo too different, but I wanna make it better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that little box and put it on there and I add that as part of the ideation. So I'm sketching out the names, I'm writing out some words on the page that are reflective of that brand. So strength, trust, power, influence, things like that that I'm working on for different brands, whatever their brand core values are, I'm writing some of those things down on paper and on my tablet and when I'm drawing and sketching these things out because those are my inspirations, those are where the ideas originated from. You never wanna lose sight of the original concept. The fourth step is actually sketching and doing some illustrations, maybe in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, whichever program you prefer. I really want you to do this in a vector format so that it's scalable, doesn't get pixelated, and it can be used for any other thing. You're, when you deliver a logo to a customer, you need to make sure you have a vector file, not just a rastered image. Hopefully you know what that is. If you don't, you need to go research vector versus raster. This is really important. We don't have time for that today in this video, but it's important you start taking those sketches, those ideas that you have, and writing those letters and keywords and buzzwords down on the paper and actually draw out the sketches and start narrowing those sketches down. You don't wanna to have too many concepts. If I have a five concept package or a three concept package, I'm usually doing six or seven or eight concepts and then refining those down into one concept and trying to give them their three or five. But I usually do six, seven or eight concepts and just have a bunch of them up there. And then I can kind of pick and choose, combine some ideas. So it's really important that you do that, that you put the sketches down and you make sure that you're actually utilizing uh, the right fonts for those logos. Because if you have something that's fancy and sophisticated, you don't want to use a boring font like Comic Sans or something generic like Times or Arial. Find a font that's unique that actually fits the brand and something that's memorable. Remember, with good logo design, it needs to be simple, applicable, and memorable. Those are the three big things you need to take into consideration. So the next step, and this is step number five, is getting feedback. I want you to bounce the ideas off of the team, your team, your community, your network, wherever you can, your Facebook page, and actually bounce the ideas that you're running through your mind and on your paper to people. Let them give you feedback. Constructive criticism is really, really helpful. They're gonna give you some feedback, but make sure that the opinions that you're getting and that you're actually applying that information are from people that have some experience. Don't just do it from any random Joe Schmo. You wanna have somebody that either is a business owner or some sort of creative or artist that can give you some constructive criticism. That's actually gonna help you make your logo designs even better. This is really important. The sixth step in the process is actually taking all that feedback, all those sketches, the ideation, the discovery, and everything you've done, and now starting to create your final designs actually drawing out a clean vector format graphic of that logo and doing it in black and white first. Every logo design that I do always starts in black and white and I let the client know that up front. Setting expectations for the logo design is really important because if they give you these logo design concepts and ideas and colors and all the stuff that they wanna do and then you send them your first concepts in black and white, they're gonna be confused. So you need to give them a heads up and let them know that if you can make a logo design in black and white look great, then when you add color, it's gonna look amazing. And so that's what I typically do is I start all my designs in black and white. I send it over to them, say, hey, do you like this initial concept? If they say yes, then I start to add the color, which makes the logo even better from there. So you wanna start designing these things in Adobe Illustrator so you have the different formats. If you use a different program like Affinity or something else, then you can do that, but make sure it's in a vector format so it's scalable, it's clean, it's clear, and crisp. That's one of the things that clients say they love about our work as our stuff is really crisp, it's always in vector, it's always crystal clear, and it isn't pixelated. So this is really important. You want your logos to be nice and clear. The last step, and this is the really important one, is the approval. This is when you actually collect your final payment. Hopefully you're doing at least a 50-50 or a 75-25, but this is where you're gonna get the approval on those design concepts. And from there, you can start to go into the branding side. You can start to create a branding guidelines, you can start to create their stationery, their social graphics, their websites. You've given them a solid framework, not just for the logo design, but their character archetype. You understand who their branding is, you have the colors. All those things can be translated to the rest of their marketing materials. And remember, simple, 
memorable and applicable. Those are the three things, the three principles you need to remember when you're doing logo designs. It needs to be simple. Don't put too many illustrations and blending effects and gradients and all those little special things take away from the actual message and from the logo itself. If you're having to put all those things on there and put it on a fancy mock-up to try to make it look cool, it's probably because the logo design isn't that great to begin with. And so I want you to send it over in this process, send them the black and whites, see which concept they like, then add the color and follow the process to, to the approval point. And if you don't get an approval, then go back to the drawing board and go back to the other concepts and see if they like any of those other concepts and try to add colors to that. That'll save you some time. So those are the seven steps. You gotta make sure you do your discovery. You gotta do your branding study because they're gonna wanna see the research and everything that went into that logo. That's why you're charging them top dollar for it. You gotta have the ideation and kind of putting some of your ideas on paper, the mood boards, things like that. Um, you need to have logo sketches or at least some drawings up on your computer, whether you're doing it with your mouse or you're doing it with a pen, having your sketches and kind of your initial concepts. Once you've done that, you want to get some feedback from your team, from your clients and some, from some people that actually are relevant, that are industry related. And the, the next step is the design, actually coming up with those final designs where you actually are adding in some colors some things like that, some maybe some drop shadows, whatever that looks like. And then the final step is once you've done that and you love it, and they love it, then you get the approval and you close out that project and move it on to the branding phase. So that's what we do. That's how we do our logo design process. So I wanted to share that with you. I know this would be super valuable. It's been valuable for me. It's something I've been learning for the last 15 years. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. And we're here every Monday, every Wednesday, and every Friday. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.